So it's long been recognised that synesthesia runs in families, but of course that could happen because a mother teaches the daughter what colour the letter A should be and what colour the letter B should be. But we know that that isn't happening simply because although synesthesia runs in families, the actual precise associations do not. So a mother might think that the letter A is red and her daughter might think that the letter A is blue or some other colour. Uh, and even more strikingly, the, the types of synesthesia don't run in families. So, for example, some of the people who we've worked with who have synesthetic taste, which is very rare, uh, you can ask them, does anybody else in your family have synesthesia? And they say, yes, but, but you know, she doesn't have synesthetic taste, she has synesthetic colours, which are, of course, the more common types of synesthesia. So, so not only do the particular associations not breed true within a family, the actual modalities that, that are affected, the types of synesthesia, don't breed true. So whatever is going on in synesthetic brains, it's obviously a very general disposition. But we do know that there are uh, particular hotspots on chromosomes that seem to be uh, linked to synesthesia. Nobody's found a synesthesia gene, and it's looking likely that there is just one gene uh, because there are hotspots on multiple chromosomes that seem to be uh, affected in, in uh, the families of synesthetes. So there might be a variety of genes that, that lead to a general disposition to have synesthesia. But also the, th the types of things that trigger synesthesia aren't necessarily innate. Um, so days of the week and letters a month are things that you learn uh, fairly late in development, so at school age, for instance. So the question is, what is the, the state of the brain before you learn this? So maybe people experience music as colours, and then as they learn their kind of symbolic information, that their linguistic concepts, and then these become imbued uh, with, with colours later on. So, so it might develop and change. Uh, but we do know that infants start off life uh, experiencing the world in quite different ways. So when you show an infant a face, it won't just activate the visual regions, it'll activate some of the auditory regions. And when you play an infant sound, it will activate the visual regions as well as the auditory regions. What we don't know is whether all infants are synesthetes. We don't know how they experience the world, but we do know that the infant's brains are very multisensory. So one suggestion is that what happens in terms of the genes is that these kinds of um, extra connections or extra multisensory processes are retained later into development. Uh, so th so the, there are developmental changes in the brain uh, that, that may keep some of these multisensory pathways open later in life. So when you learn your letters and numbers, uh, that, that they're not just shapes and abstract concepts, they're actually given to colours and tastes and other types of sensory experiences.